Shiny hunting is so interesting and so much fun. So I decided to give myself one day to find as many shinies as I can in the Teal Mask DLC. But Chumbus, you already played the Teal Mask for a billion hours and caught every new shiny. And yes, while these are both factual statements, there's a ton of shiny Pokemon in the land of Kitakami that I still want to catch. Either being ones from Paldea that I was never able to get, or ones I evolved and no longer have. And in order to help keep track, I made a list of every shiny Pokemon I hope to catch by the end of this video. At the top of that list is Oricorio. If you don't know, Oricorio has four different forms. And in the land of Kitakami, you're able to do an isolated encounter for the blue Sensu form. And I absolutely love this shiny. So I'm so glad to finally be able to have one for myself, even if it took a little while to appear. Also, I should mention, in order to make this challenge a little more exciting, I won't be allowing myself to make any sparkling power sandwiches. So the only help I'll have is from my handy dandy shiny charm and encounter power. And for even more pizzazz, for every shiny I don't catch that's on this list, I'll be giving one shiny away to you, my subscribers watching. So make sure to hit that big red button. Next, I went searching by the crystal pool for this droopy little guy. Slugma is by no means a favorite Pokemon of mine, but its shiny is just so good. I did end up evolving my shiny Slugma into a Macargo, which also has an unbelievably good shiny. Also, does anyone else not know what gen Slugma is from? My first Pokemon games were Ruby and Sapphire, so my brain just associates Slugma with those games. I always forget it's actually a gen 2 Pokemon. Anyways, I was doing this hunt during the day, because with encounter power fire, you basically only see Slugma. But the hunt started to go long. It became dusk, and with that, out come Litwick. And after only seeing three Litwick, we found a shiny. Of course. And only a few minutes after that, another. Charm only, by the way. I finished up my encounter fire boost and decided to move on for the time being. I'll come back and look for Slugma when I can't get ambushed by a shiny Litwick. But we now had three shiny Pokemon in just an hour and 30 minutes of hunting. And nearby, there's another shiny I'd like to hunt. If you've watched me before, you probably know my feelings about Geodude. I think it's a really, really dumb Pokemon. It's literally just a rock with arms. And same goes for a bunch of Gen 1 designs. You know, I'm gonna stop myself there. That's a rabbit hole I don't feel like going down right now. Regardless how I feel about the Pokemon, Geodude has a really good looking shiny. Unfortunately, it took a little while to show up, but well worth it. Geodude took just over three sandwiches to show up. So I basically had a full boost of encounter ground to go. So I went over to this ditch because this adorable shrew spawns here. And if you know me, you know I love green shinies. And this cutie is an esteemed member of the green gang. Seriously, this has to be one of the cutest Pokemon out there. I love it. And the nest ball matches perfectly. I figured I'd follow up these past two ground type shinies with one more. But on my way over, I noticed something. Wait a minute, who are you? The Pokemon company has these mass outbreak events. And while I was recording, it just so happened to be the time frame that they were doing their Halloween event. So there were outbreaks for Drifloon, Mimikyu, Phantom, and Gravard all over the place. And while Drifloon isn't a Kitakami native, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get a shiny Balloonie for myself, especially since it's usually a Scarlet exclusive. Ooh, that's tough. Failing a shiny in classic Scarlet and Violet fashion. But that reminds me of a little rule I put in place. For every shiny I fail, I'll be trading one away. So that's minus one shiny from my total. Rip. But another half hour later, I was redeemed. And I was redeemed in a big way. Because this has to be one of the best shinies out there. It looks so good. And I know using quick balls is frowned upon, but this is definitely a shiny that needs to be caught in a quick ball. Oh. Why does this thing know explosion? 
Anyways, I am a professional, and I've never failed a shiny in my life. So, I obviously saved. Tried again, and got it on the second attempt. Now, the reason I actually came to this area before getting distracted by the balloon was because there's a Gibble outbreak. And I've never seen an outbreak for this little guy. I didn't even know they were possible. Little did I know, this was the worst outbreak I've ever been to. The way Pokemon spawn in Scarlet and Violet is far from perfect. You can't be too close, otherwise they won't spawn. But you can't be too far away either, otherwise other Pokemon will spawn. By driving away and coming back, I was consistently able to get one, sometimes two Gibble to spawn, and if I just stood by the entrance, I was sometimes, keyword, sometimes, able to get more. Like in this instance, there's three Gibble. My record was six. Six. I was never able to get more than six Gibble on my screen at one time. This outbreak was just hell. A smarter person would have seen this and just given up. But I am obviously not too smart. I am a shiny hunter after all. It took me an hour just to knock out 60 Gibble. An hour. For a task that usually takes somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes. God, saying that out loud, I really am stupid. The shiny gods must have seen me suffer enough though. Because somehow, only 10 minutes later, the little gremlin showed up. Another great shiny that perfectly matches the quick ball. Woo! And why not follow up one pseudo legendary, then with another? Because right outside this torturous cave, you can find these little cuties all over the place. Which I spent an hour looking for before calling it quits for the night. I was giving myself 24 hours to shiny hunt in Kitakami, but I wasn't doing it all in one sitting. I completed my playing time for this challenge over a week. But when I came back on, there was a Jengmo outbreak waiting for me. And fortunately, this outbreak wasn't cursed like the last one. In fact, I found the shiny before I even finished knocking out 60 of them. I absolutely love this shiny. So adorable with the pink heart on its head. Now, I'd love to catch it with Love Ball, but I don't have any. So... After Jengmo, there was another outbreak I wanted to check out. Petalil isn't one of my targets for this challenge, but I haven't found it shiny in Scarlet and Violet, so I needed to check it out. I was a bit worried for this outbreak though. Petalil's shiny definitely isn't that noticeable. No way. No. Way. I've never had that happen, where I find two outbreak shinies before knocking out 60. Back to back. Then there was a third outbreak I wanted to check out. Electros is a shiny from base game Scarlet and Violet that I was never able to get my grubby little hands on. And in the Teal Mask, its pre-evolutions have much better outbreaks than they did in the base game. So I was going to this Tynamo outbreak. Just like with Petalil, I was worried about finding this shiny. If there was ever a time where I needed to find a shiny before knocking out 60, this was it. Well, somehow, for the third time in a row, it happened. Back to back to back outbreaks, finding the shiny before even getting to the best possible odds. All without sparkling sandwiches too. Crazy. And since my luck was on fire, I could try finding another shiny Tynamo. Nope, I searched for an additional hour, and then gave up. But I did evolve this little eel into this amazing looking shiny. Also, Green Gang. Luck seems to come in bunches. I just had probably the best luck I've ever had playing these games. So I was definitely due for some bad luck. I did a quick date skip and stumbled upon a Pichu outbreak. For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to go for a third shiny in a row that barely changes from the original. But it had to be done, because Pichu slash Pikachu was on my list of targets. Like I said though, I was due for some bad luck because I spent the next three hours searching for this piece of But since Pichu's shiny doesn't change too drastically, I was running into every other Pichu thinking it was a shiny, and I had had enough. Three hours is far too long to look for one target when you only have 24 hours to hunt. So I moved on, over to the apple fields. I really wanted to find myself a shiny applin, 
but the apple fields are such a tight cramped space. So I only spent about 30 minutes there. Luckily, there is another place to hunt applin, over by the Syrupy Apple Shed. And what's even better about this spot is that on rare occasion, both Flapple and Appleton spawn. It would be so cool to see one of those two shiny in the overworld. And while I was here, I ran into this little critter. I have no idea how I even saw this thing. But I'm not complaining. Especially because it was something I was planning on hunting at some point during our 24 hours. But I kept looking for my green apple afterwards. Encounter Power 2 didn't seem to be getting the job done. There weren't that many Applin, Flapple, or Appleton. So I did something. I made an Encounter Power 3 sandwich. But one without sparkling power. Except even with that, I still couldn't find the sour apple. At night, there were just way too many Noibat. And during the day, the game just didn't seem to care about my level 3 encounter power dragon sandwich. I have no idea why that's the case. Maybe someone with a better understanding of the spawn mechanics can let me know. But after searching for two hours, it was time to move on from this hunt as well. Bonsley. I honestly can't remember seeing a single Bonsley in all of Scarlet and Violet. It's been in the game since the beginning, but who knows where you can find them. And that's why it was a hunt I knew I needed to complete for this challenge. I went over to an outbreak to look for this adorable grass type. Problem was, my luck was still shot. I spent another two hours on a hunt. Except this time, I actually ended up finding my target. It's shiny looks so good. The colors are so vibrant. I love it. I mean, how could you not love this cutie? And the details of its model? Jeez, it looks so good. Did, did Bonsley just become one of my favorite Pokemon? And I just needed to catch him in a Pokeball to match his balls. Speaking of Pokemon that have been in Scarlet and Violet since release that I don't remember ever coming across, I made a psychic boost in order to hunt Hatena. Basically in the same spot I was looking for Bonsley. Hatena is probably one of my favorite Gen 8 Mons. Another small cutie. And for the first time in like 12 hours, I didn't spend two or more hours on a hunt. And now that I was in this area again, and it was daytime, I could reattempt to go for Slugma. The problem was, Slugma just didn't want to make an appearance. It got dark again, and oh boy, here comes Litwick. The issue though, is I was running low on time. So if I wanted this shiny Slugma, I couldn't leave. I just needed to hope that the shiny gods were on my side this time, and wouldn't torment me with another shiny Litwick. Well, my answer came, you guessed it, two hours later. This incredible, gray, gloopy fella. For real, one of my favorite shinies. And part of the reason I wanted to find this shiny so badly, is because I just needed to catch it with this perfectly matching heavy ball. And with this catch, we were now down to our final five hours to hunt. And there were still plenty of shinies I needed to catch to check them off my list. Five hours for 11 Pokemon. Oh boy. Here's how it went. Fortunately, there was a Spoink outbreak right next to the shiny Slugma I had just caught. I knocked out 60 as fast as possible, and luckily a shiny showed up after just 10 minutes. Another amazing shiny with a really unique color scheme. But this adorable pig was going to evolve. Nice. Since that shiny didn't take too long, I made a gamble. I went into the cave behind the crystal pool with a steel sandwich and spent the next three hours looking for a green gang bronzor. A bold choice to spend that much time searching when I was close to running out and one that did not pay off. And with a little less than two hours, I made a poison sandwich, and did a little date skipping. I was looking for an Ekans or Salandid outbreak, which I was able to find with ease. And I was maybe there for five minutes before this great shiny showed up. One I've wanted for so long. And this outbreak also showed up. Although it wasn't the snake I was looking for, and technically not on my list of targets, I couldn't pass up on this opportunity. And good thing I didn't because this golden snake showed up for me real fast. And I'm gonna count that as finding a target. 
since it's in the same evolution line. Then I went over to the Timeless Woods, looking for the radioactive deer, but I spent 30 minutes looking with no luck. I then went over to this little pond to attempt to find a shiny male basculin. Another 30 minutes came and went with no shiny, Sag. Now, with our final 30 minutes, I still needed a few more shinies. I made a ghost sandwich to look for the ape with spiky anime hair. And I got so lucky here, having it show up in less than a minute. I very quickly made a water boost and did some date skipping in order to find this Lombre outbreak. And with the timer dwindling down, I fortunately found it just before my 24 hours were up. So, our 24 hours of shiny hunting are done. And I gotta say, I'm definitely surprised by the results. In 24 hours of playtime, I was able to catch 19 shiny Pokemon. And one fail. I'm a little surprised we only found 19. The last time I did a 24 hour challenge, I was able to capture 30 shinies. That being said, 19 shinies in 24 hours is still very good. I was also able to get 14 out of the 20 shinies that were on my list of targets. But that means I have to give away 6 of my 19 shinies, and plus 1 for the shiny I failed, totaling 7 shinies to give away. And 7 lucky subscribers will be getting one of these 19 shiny Pokemon. So make sure to subscribe. And also, like the video too, it helps me out a ton. Anyways, that'll do it for our adventures today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!